Hi, welcome to Real Magic Review. My name is Steve Faulkner and this is Inside Out by Ben Earl. Before the review, can you please like and subscribe? Uh, just do it now. Just click it now, like, and then subscribe. Might as well, aren't you? And then uh, press the little bell icon so you get notified of when I go live. And, of course, go and see cardmagiccourse.com. That's my online card magic course. It's massive. It's just got so much on it. And I've just been tweaking it and changing it and doing more live sessions. We've got guest appearances coming soon. It's all very exciting. Have a look at that. Cardmagiccourse.com. So a new book by Ben Earl. Uh, always exciting uh, for many of us. And I was, I was inter interested in this because I'd heard a couple of things, um, not like bad reviews, but a couple of people, well, I'd heard rumour and hadn't watched the reviews that saying that this person had said this about it and, it, you know, said it wasn't that good, etc. So I really kind of stayed away and didn't, didn't really look at anything and just thought, right, I'm going to read this objectively. Um, I'm not going to sort of say it's great just because it's Ben Earl, because we all know Ben's a phenomenal magician. That goes without saying. And uh, I've been watching some of the live stuff. It's all absolutely brilliant. So that can sometimes uh, cloud our judgment. Well, it does. You know, we, we, none of us are immune to that. If we are a fan of someone or we really like someone's work, we, we can, if we're not careful, just, just have that kind of um, bias of everything they bring out. We kind of go, it's good and we see the good in it. And I tried not to do it. I tried to see this really objectively because what can happen in lockdown and what did happen quite a lot is people just bought stuff out because they had a bit of time and they thought, right, we're creating a brand and we're going to bring stuff out. And if you're not careful, you can fall into that thing of bringing stuff out because you need to bring stuff out. And that is never the best way to, to create art or craft even. Uh, is to go, right, I've got a deadline, I'm going to do something by then, let's see what comes out. And I was worried this may be that, especially after the shift free, which I have yet to read, by the way, but it was very shortly after that, so I thought, have they just sort of you know, cranked something out? So, I, start, I, read, I started reading this, and st straight away I kind of thought, oh, okay, we're, we're, we're in this place, and I really need to be in this place now, and I'll explain. Before lockdown, and actually since lockdown has lifted, I've had a real love-hate with performing magic. The corporate gigs of turning up and getting around 20 tables, I'm really starting to struggle with. Now, I know it's an easy way to make money um, relatively and all that kind of stuff, and you can't complain, you get paid this much for doing it. No, no, I'm not on about that. I'm on about just artistically and creatively what I get from that. That's it. And can I make that better? Can I make, you know, how, how, can I go on and do that until I'm like, you know, I'm nearly 50, so 40, uh, 60, 70, etc. After that, I'd be lucky. Uh, and all those questions are starting to come into my head, probably because of my age. How long can I do this for? But before lockdown, I remembered actually something happened the other day. I had time at a gig. I, there wasn't like 200 people to get around and loads of tables and you have to get around every table. There was time to sit with people and really think about what I wanted to do. And it was a completely different thing. It, I could have been there for hours and hours and hours. I forgot about the time I got into flow and because there was not that franticness was out of there, that sort of factory magic, what I call it, of just get around, just do the thing, of actually sitting with people, you know, sitting down at a table and, and being able to get, have the focus and have a conversation and make it about us, you know, not just me, but all of us that, that were experiencing that um, piece of magic. This book couldn't have come at a better time. This is about the latter for me. It's about understanding what we have and appreciating it. So, and I can see why some people would feel a certain way about this book. You, the first three, four, five, well, all of the effects, I would say, aren't going to give you any new moves. They may give you new thoughts on moves. They're not going to give you new routines that you've never heard of before. They're not going to give you any of that stuff. But what they are going to do is look at what you may have started learning years ago or may have learned years ago, may have been doing for a while, and remind you in very explicit ways why they are so good and why we should maybe go back and reconnect with them and create miracles out of them and be happy with them without adding too much. And so there was very much a feeling of getting rid of the noise, getting rid of the, the faff, getting rid of the over-scripting, getting rid of this stuff and allowing this kind of revelation or the, a revealing of the sort of gem that we've got in there because it's very easy to forget this. And I'm like, you know, all these books, I've been wondering recently, you know, why, what am I doing when I'm collecting a magic book? And I've accepted now what I'm doing is collecting it. That's it. And opening it up and having some joy with that magic book in the moment. What I'm not doing, I've accepted, is trying to find new stuff to perform. Now, I might do, 
and that's great but it it became quite stressful of kind of, you know, trying to remember everything going on and going out and going, right, I'm going to do this trick. I'm going to do something new today. And actually realizing that it was just me doing something new that was the important thing. It wasn't actually the experience for the spectator. And this book is about going back to what is the experience of that spectator? How can we remove the ego and go, right, what can we do here to have an experience with that spectator and create something truly magical? And what does that truly magical mean? You know, is it someone going, wow, that's amazing? Is it someone clapping and cheering? Or is it something that happens on a deeper level that may not be an amazing verbal response? And actually, he's got a really funny um, moment when he talks about being in an airport and showing someone some magic, you know, because he's bored, he's waiting, and he kind of wants something to do. And doing something that is very miraculous and not getting a great response uh, from it and there's a kind of honesty to it as well he also talks about the responses from family members and things like that so it kind of when I was reading it I was really connecting with all that stuff and kind of going yeah you're actually writing about real world experiences here or versions of them you're not just kind of making this up so it felt like a very personal book as well it felt like and in the end he does say it's a personal book and I actually believe him he says it's a I can't remember the exact words but it's a realistic representation of what he does and I believe that as well and that's really what, what I wasn't expecting from this. All of the routines in this book, and I'm not going to go through all of them, are routines that have come, I think, out of improvisation. Improvising around certain themes, and of course he's got a triumph in it, you don't improvise a triumph, but it, of kind of doing it and kind of going, that feels too long or that feels too short, or actually he's... This, the second routine in it is something that actually I improvised once, a similar thing with two jokers and do perform often now and I've actually taught and he does it, it differently but it's a kind of sandwich thing when somebody kind of you go through the deck and there's culling involved and things like that but it feels very organic and by that I don't mean it uses organic stuff like we talk about with with um, tricks that come out I mean it feels like it's come from a place of, of, of sort of tweaking and doing and improvising and, it, and that's the, the final result and I actually think that's happened with a lot of this stuff you know when you've got a routine that is just talking about you know one part of an ambitious card routine repeated okay but then he's got three ways of of presenting something in the mind of the spectator so in their mind they've seen two different things or one thing happened in three stages if you see what i mean so so basically it's kind of like something's already happened you do one thing but then you build a presentation on it that there are three stages to the miracle that's all i don't want to give you too much away because i feel like i'm kind of not respecting the, the, the stuff in this because it's not just all moves and tricks. In, this, in a similar way, he, there's a transposition effect which uses something that we all learn and something I've really enjoyed going back to and, and spending time with, a move that, you know, if you are a sleight of hand artist, you will spend a lot of time on and read a lot about. But doing it in a way that a transposition happens in the mind of the spectator. And, and when I read that first, I kind of went, oh, it's one of those things as well. It happens in, yeah, it can be very pretentious, Dan. It doesn't really happen in the mind. It's just all scripting and it kind of makes it sound very mysterious. But actually, when I reread it, I went, that is happening. That, that is really clever because it's clever because it's, it's easy to follow. But it is you know, the idea of thinking of something and forgetting it and then thinking of something else. And when you've changed something in your mind, something physical changes, I think is something that, of course, has been explored before. But again, if usually put on top of things and things and things, and we kind of lo use, lose the purity of that moment. And this whole book is really about that, right up to the end where there are two essays, one on the crosscut force. And I've heard Ben talk about the crosscut force before, but his essay on that and kind of different ways of, you know, someone forcing a cut on themselves using it. And importantly, why we find it so disagreeable sometimes. And he lists the reasons why we maybe don't use it when we should go back to it, and ego being one of them. And I think that runs throughout this whole book is this idea of, and I've mentioned it before, is releasing the ego. So this book is a very, it's a very Zen book, but it's also a very stoic book. It's about looking at the real value of what we do rather than the, the perceived value of what we've been told we should as magicians like and actually stripping that back. And he talks, there's a, there's a lovely bit where he's clearly talking about Danny Buckler. I think, you know, whenever you talk about Christian Murty, Alan Watts, you're talking with Danny Buckler. But it's lovely ribbing of that. And there's, um, and, and that's, incidentally, that's uh, an invisible deck routine and a, a gimmickless invisible deck routine, which I thought was going to play like the invisible deck, but actually doesn't. It's a kind of the same presentation, but quite a different trick and one that plays big. And the story is that he told Danny it and Danny went on stage and did it and stormed it you know, straight away. So it's quite a, an easy trick if you've got a little, some slight chops there. I'm not saying Danny has just slight chops. <laughs> He's probably got a fair few. 
But the, the, the writing, and I know I'm sort of going all over the place in here, but the, the writing is, you know, when he's talking about, you can, you can feel the chemistry between them in that piece of writing, the, the gentle ribbing and the fact that he's saying, you know, Danny's never going to read the book, which I, I know actually he has, uh, one of the two he has read, according to, to Ben. But also all these little bits of writing in it, the, the scenarios he puts himself in feel real. And I know this because I've been there so many times, the kind of social situations where you're feeling kind of awkward. So, you know, outcome needs to be part of it because you don't really want to be there. So someone asks you for a trick and they do the usual jokes and you don't really want to do it, but you kind of do because you, you kind of are very proud of your art and you, you know, this whole thing of not wanting to do something but always ending up doing something is something I always find myself doing and actually being really glad that I did. And I did it this morning, actually, with one of the things from this book, which was the, as I've said, the ambitious card thing. And I showed a friend of mine, again, who's seen lots of magic and just gave it loads of time and space. And the response was incredible. He was just like, how are you doing this? And it was, again, it reminded me why, reading this reminded me, and just reading it sometimes about the cards in hand, of how it feels to a spectator and how it felt to me and when I was a spectator many years ago. There were, there, cause there were tricks that I saw back then that were quite similar in a way, very simple, one vanish of a coin being made very, very magical, you know, before my head got just filled with all this stuff. And I think actually it reminded me of someone, something, someone said something to me a few years ago when they saw me do the cups and balls on stage and they said, you're just throwing away those vanishes, you know, cause they weren't a magician, but they knew magic. They were a juggler, I think. I can't remember who it was. But they said, you know, you're doing that for the three vanishes of the ball, and you're just kind of getting through them to get to the next bit. And they said, you've got to remember how magical that can be of ball vanishing, you know, from your hand. But you're going one vanishes, two vanishes, you know, and you're kind of, you know, trotting your way through it to get to the gags, basically, and get to the melon and the orange loads at the end. And I always remember that because I saw it and I thought, they are actually, you know, a vanish of something is very pure and very magical. So give it time. And that's exactly, again, I know I'm repeating myself what this book does. There is so much more to say about this. So if you've got questions, I will take this into the live session, uh, uh, next live session on Thursday, or maybe the one after that, if this doesn't go out before that. But, but come and join us for the first day sessions. So I've got pages of notes in front of me, you know, with, with all this stuff. But I'm going to read a, a, a quote um, that he's, he has in the book, which is, I love the practicality and efficiency of exploiting the one simple condition and squeezing every last drop out of it. And I think that really, really sums up this book. It's about, again, going, how can we, he calls it extracting the DNA. How can we extract the DNA out of this thing and go, let's get rid of the noise, as I said, all the preconceived ideas and go, how can we make that thing, that wonderful thing that we've kind of almost abandoned, and, and bring it back into life and go, right, let's make you shine, like I said. And again, I know I'm kind of um, repeating myself, but it's important that you know what this book is. This is that. It's not the book of loads of new moves. And I would say, if you are one of the people that think, you, you know, I want to learn something new, get one of your books off the, off the shelf. Maybe one of the books you, learned ye you bought years ago, maybe one of the first books you bought, open it up and learn some stuff out of it, read it back to back. And I promise you, you will learn a lot of new stuff because I've been doing that quite recently, reading The Royal Road and doing the course, um, creating a course on it. So we have enough new stuff. We don't need any more. What we do need is, is to reconnect a lot of us with the joy of what we do. And it's really, really helped me do that. And I, I think this is a, a really important book. I think it's a, it's a, a wonderful magic book. And it's the, probably the best one I've read in a while that has made me go, yeah, yeah, I kind of like magic again, which is, is really important. So I know that was a waffly review. Um, so, <laughs> which is, that's why do I apologize? For, when's it going to be anything else? But hopefully you get a feel for the book. I very much liked it. If you want loads of new tricks that you've never done before, you probably won't. Um, but if you, if you want to go out there and just, you know, if you're losing your mojo, read that, you know, and even if you're not read it, cause it's great. And, uh, uh, and, and I loved it. So there you go, Ben L, Inside Out. Uh, have a good one, if none of that made sense. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, like and subscribe, check out Card Magic Course. That's a lot more concise. Uh, take care, see you later.